Some people say I mispronounce rail you But that is okay At least it's okay with me StackQuest Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StackQuest. Today we're going to do Neural Networks Part 3 the ReLU activation function in action. Note, this stat quest assumes that you are already familiar with the main ideas behind neural networks. If not, check out the quest. The link is in the description below. In Neural Networks Part 1, inside the black box, we started with a simple data set that showed whether or not different drug dosages were effective against a virus. The low and high dosages were not effective, but the medium dosage was effective. Then we talked about how a neural network like this one, that uses the soft plus activation function in the hidden layer, can fit a green squiggle to the dataset. Bam. Now let's see what happens if we swap out the soft plus activation function in the hidden layer with one of the most popular activation functions for deep learning and convolutional neural networks, the ReLU activation function, which is short for rectified linear unit and sounds like a robot. And, as a bonus, because it is common to put an activation function before the final output, we'll do that too. Bam! Remember, to keep the math simple, Let's assume dosages go from 0 for low to 1 for high. So if we plug in the lowest dosage, 0, the connection from the input to the top node in the hidden layer multiplies the dosage by 1.70 and then adds negative 0.85. And the result is an x-axis coordinate for the activation function. So, if we plug in 0 for dosage, then the x-axis coordinate for the activation function is negative 0.85. Now we plug negative 0.85 into the ReLU activation function. The ReLU activation function outputs whichever value is larger, 0 or the input value, which in this case is negative 0.85. And because 0 is greater than negative 0.85, the output from the ReLU activation function is 0. And the corresponding y-axis value is 0. So let's put a blue dot at 0 for when dosage equals 0. Now, if we increase dosage to 0.2, the x-axis coordinate for the activation function is negative 0.51. And again, because 0 is greater than negative 0.51, the output from the ReLU activation function is 0. And the corresponding y-axis value is 0. So let's put a blue dot at 0 for when dosage equals 0.2. And if we increase the dosage value to 0.4, we get 0 for the y-axis coordinate. Again. However, when dosage equals 0.6, the x-axis coordinate is 0.17. Now, when we plug 0.17 into the ReLU activation function, the output is 0.17 because 0.17 is greater than 0. And the corresponding y-axis value is 0.17. And if we continue to increase the dosage values all the way to 1, the maximum dosage, we get this bent blue line. Then we multiply the y-axis coordinates on the bent blue line by negative 40.8, and the new bent blue line goes off the screen. Wah, wah. Note, for those of you drawing this at home, your final bent blue line will have a steeper slope than mine because, for the sake of clarity, I am not drawing things perfectly to scale. Tiny bam. Now when we run dosages through the connection to the bottom node in the hidden layer, we get the corresponding y-axis coordinates 
that go off the screen for this straight orange line. Now we multiply the y-axis coordinates on the straight orange line by 2.70. And we end up with this final straight orange line. Now we add the bent blue line and the straight orange line together to get this green wedge. Now we add the final bias term, negative 16, to the y-axis coordinates on the green wedge. Lastly, because we included the ReLU activation function right in front of the output, we use the green wedge as its input. For example, the y-axis coordinate for this point on the green wedge is negative 16, which corresponds to this x-axis coordinate for the ReLU activation function. And when we plug that into the ReLU activation function, we get 0 because 0 is greater than negative 16. And 0 corresponds to this green dot. Likewise, the y-axis coordinate for this point on the green wedge is negative 9.2. And just like before, when we plug that into the ReLU activation function, we get 0. And 0 corresponds to this green dot. Now, in contrast to the last two points we fed into the ReLU activation function, this one is positive, 0 0.49. And when we plug it into the ReLU activation function, we get 0 0.49. And 0 0.49 corresponds to this green dot. Likewise, the remaining positive y-axis coordinates stay the same and the negative values are set to zero. And at long last, we end up with this green pointy thing. Double bam! Thus, the ReLU activation function may seem weird because it's not curvy, and the equation is really simple. But just like for any other activation function, the weights and biases on the connections slice them, flip them, and stretch them into new shapes which are added together to get an entirely new shape that fits the data. Triple BAM! Oh no! It's another technical detail alert! Some of you may have noticed that the ReLU activation function is bent and not curved. This means that the derivative is not defined where the function is bent. And that's a problem, because gradient descent which we use to estimate the weights and biases, requires a derivative for all points. However, it's not a big problem, because we can get around this by simply defining the derivative at the bent part to be 0 or 1. It doesn't really matter. Small bam. And now it's time for some shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, Check out the StatQuest study guides at statquest.org. There's something for everyone. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting StatQuest. If you like this StatQuest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time. Quest on.